Hi and welcome to cubicet.com. My name is Mazia Sharifian and I'd like to show you how to do Plexus hands in Adobe After Effects. First let me explain what Plexus is. It's actually a plugin for After Effects and you can check it out in AE script web page and of course uh, currently I'm using version 1 you can purchase version 2 it got lots of new features now let's see what Plexus is in After Effects to understand the basics of Plexus is to think of it as a spider web suppose you have two points being connected by a spider web and if you increase the distance too much between the two points they will be disconnected that's the whole idea now in After Effects you can assign different elements as the points I've told you about like lights object which is a 3d objects and the vertices of that object will be the points and a path uh, of course a path is a mask and a plexus will get the points on the path you have chosen when you are working with this plugin there are three important attributes you need to know first is the maximum distance which is the distance where the bond between each two points starts to fade away as you can see if I decrease this number some of the lines will fade away now how much will it take so the connected line totally fades away that's number two fade out distance which is the length in which the line fades away if I increase this number and decrease this number you will see some of the lines will be half transparent and that's because the duration of time in which the lines fade away is a little bit long so you can see some of them in half transparency so I'll skip these changes I've done and the last one is the thickness of the line and it's it's easy to understand if I increase the number the thickness will be increased of course there are lots of more attributes you need to understand but the ones I've told you about are the most important ones to know you can even add some effects as well as you can see for instance a spherical field if I add this and increase the radius of this sphere too much as you can see and you know change the location of it you will see what it affects it's kind of a field which affects the points it kind of reminds me of the game World of Goo anyway <coughs> Now let's carry on and start working on our project. This is our project, our final project. Let me demonstrate what we will be going to do. And of course I'm not going to do all of this tracking data and everything because it will take a lot of time. Basically we've got our footage and we have some track points which as you can see are a lot of tracking data and we have got some lights which each one is connected to a tracker and we have got plexus effects assigned to a solid I've got the same layer uh, which I've got as a background as foreground because it's in some areas as you can see I've got to overlap the fingers on the lines of the plexus and I've assigned a motion blur as well. It's, that's it. Now let's carry on and start working on our project. Let me put my footage in a composition. I've got this. I'll put it in a composition. And I create a solid. Name it Plexus. Sign the effect. And I better start to see the final result of course so I'll add lights and I'll create some lights here as well and uh, I'll put them away from each other to see the whole idea I'll come to lines of course you can go to points and change different attributes of each point but that's not what we are going to do because it got nothing to do with us 
So I'll maximize this distance, maybe to a thousand. It works fine. The thickness is fine. So now we need to start tracking. I'll double click on this footage. I'll go a little bit forward to see the hands are far away. Now I pick two to track with. So this, these fingers I'll start with, I'll go to motion tracking and start track some data. Okay, let me start with thumbs. I'll track motion. I don't need to track the rotation or scale. I'll track backward to see this previous frames as well. And basically the most time you spend is for tracking. As you saw, I've used a lot of tracking data. In some places it might change a little bit, so I'll change it by myself. So I manual track. I track forward and okay it's, it's it's it was a little bit easy these points till here it gets disappeared our friend moves his hands a lot so maybe we should punish him for this but it's okay it's no problem i'll just make him track this data by himself oh it's here sorry okay the thumb goes from here to here as you can see okay this is to be honest it's not really important to be exactly the same position because it's a motion graphic and you know the spider webs I've told you about might a little bit move or wiggle maybe okay I think it's a good point to start auto tracking okay it's okay and now it goes away I think sorry and of course if it gets a lot messy around here you can come here and you can uncheck display motion path and it's going to be a little bit more clear to see your footage to be tracked Okay, I think you get the whole idea for this finger I've tracked. So I'll go to another one. So I'll track motion and start track the other thumb. Okay. I'll go backward to, to be at the start point. Okay, maybe two more points. Okay, and I come here and track forward. Okay, I've got my tracking data. So I'll just select tracker point one and see if it's okay. Now I'll create a null object, name this tracker one, assign tracker one to tracker one position, apply. Okay, and now we've got our tracking data on a null object. I'll create another null object, name this tracker 2, and I'll assign tracker 2 information to tracker 2, of course. Okay, apply. Okay, as you can see, these are connected with each other. Now the tricky part is parent my lights to the tracker points I've assigned. But the problem is lights are three-dimensional and my null objects are two-dimensional. How can I parent a three-dimensional object to a two-dimensional one? That's where I recommend you to use Creative Cow. It's a web page I use a lot in its forums, I'll go and check if I got stuck and I'll search a question and most of the times I got my answers so fast. So the script I've used here is this 
Actually, this script, I mean, I don't use the After Effects parenting, I'll just use a script which skips the third dimension and parents the three-dimensional object to a two-dimensional. I'll just copy this script and, sorry, in my working composition, I'll just come to position and paste this script. You want to see this completely. This is going to be parented by Tracker 2 actually, and it's going to skip the third dimension parenting. I'll use the same script as the position of the other light, and I'll just parent this to tracker one okay and now we've got our result let me check the area of tracked maybe from here to here and do a round preview as you can see we've got our result so you do these steps I've told you about and of course more time and you get the final result. I've added an adjustment layer as well, which turns motion blur. I'll go back to standard mode and force motion blur so it gets more realistic. Sorry, in composition. With moves, it gets more realistic. Of course, you can increase the amount of motion blur samples. Of course, just remember to use a duplicated layer of the footage and cover some of the overlapping areas of the finger and do some garbage mask or maybe key this dark color. And uh, so it's going to be realistic. And as you can see, you can even add an object inside this plexus. You mean, I mean, you can even have both lights and objects and even masks at the same time and do have a wonderful result. Thanks for watching this tutorial. Hope you find it useful. Again, this is Mazio Sharifian from Cubicat. Hope to see you soon.